a fold. I don't have pockets. Oh, oh no, you can't. <laughs> you put it inside your. <laughs> inside into my dress. No, that would be inappropriate. Hand warmer. Inappropriate. Oh, okay. Um. What's up, guys? We are back with another episode of Coffee to Cigars. We are going to do another coffee tasting today because when I did this first episode, Jennifer was like, I want to taste coffee. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, so she brought us some coffee today. This is Jennifer Lynch, by the way. I know that those of you that have been on my channel before, you've seen her before. Um, but she's also an IPB pro and she works in the real world today. So, uh, well, every day she works in the real world. I do. So, <laughs> I do. Yeah. Sell real estate full time. So lots of interaction with people outside of the sport mm -hmm. on the day to day. Right. So. so as you know, we are trying to do some like real life fitness tips and things like that along with this coffee to cigars uh, series. So we're going to talk to her a little bit about that when she deals with in her everyday life and the people that she interacts with every day and the questions they have about fitness and lifestyle and nutrition and training and all of the things. Before we get into that though, we are going to taste some coffee. So she brought by a seasonal blend, which is our um, Thanksgiving blend from Starbucks, which sounds really, really good. So it's um, has notes of candy, pecan, and sage. So I'm gonna let you, just wanna try and open that? Well, she's- oh. <laughs> Not your forte? No, no, not my thing. So while she's doing that, I'm gonna read their, their little watch. I'm gonna start like, ah. Yeah, well, if you, can't, if you can't get it, I've got, I've got knives, we can, we can, oh, she's got it. <laughs> she's shown off already. already. She's shown off already. <laughs> All right, cool. So. All right, Starbucks Thanksgiving blend is an expression of gratitude to the world's most distinctive coffee regions. Means from Sumatra in Indonesia, Sedima, Sedama, I don't know how to pronounce that, sorry, mm. in, in Ethiopia, and the Antigua region of Guatemala are expertly blended and richly roasted to create a cup that's delicately sweet, elegantly flavored and ar aromic, this, aromatic? Aromatic. aromatic. Yeah. <laughs> that too. This blend features notes of candied pecan, sage, and dried fig. Starbucks Thanksgiving blend will be the featured dark roast brewed coffee the week of Thanksgiving at participating stores in the U.S. Mm. So if you want to try it, you can go get it the week of Thanksgiving. And it'll be also available for purchase as whole bean throughout the holiday season while supplies last. Here we are. Um, so we get this out of the way. So, oh, the beans smell so good. <laughs> so that good. I, it actually sounds really like it sounds really good. Yeah. I love Thanksgiving fall stuff yeah. anyway. So yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Like you could do this with like your like your pumpkin pie. <laughs> while I foam with the mouth. <laughs> so okay, comment below, guys. Your favorite Thanksgiving pie. Your favorite Thanksgiving Ooh. pie. I'm, I'm, so I'm a pie person. I would rather have okay. pie over like, um, like cakes or cookies or anything like that. Mm. Pie is my favorite dessert. I want it all. <laughs> all right. People don't, I don't think people realize, but pie is by yeah. far my favorite dessert. I would rather have that over everything. Even, even over ice cream, oh over everything gosh. else. I would, I would like to have pie. Yeah. So pumpkin is my, pumpkin is my second favorite. Hmm. Apple. Apple. She knows my story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like a fruit pie in general kind of gal, yeah, but yeah. for sure apple pie. And then after that, it's cheesecakes for me. Okay. And, and okay. then, oh, talk about a apple pie stuffed cheesecake. Ooh, what? That sounds really good. It sounds like a heart attack waiting to happen, but so delicious. You know, and I love to bake, so this is something I'm mm. like, I'm thinking in my head, maybe I should try baking one of those, maybe. Oh. Let me know when you do. <laughs> we'll have another tasting. We'll do, literally, we'll do this and we'll do some some pie and some. Oh cake. my god! We're both in prep, so we can't do that right now. Yeah. So, but we could do that after. I just want to have like a side of figs in candy pecans yeah. with this. After you read that little description, like yeah. it just. Little... You could have a little snack, like a little like yeah. a little charcuterie board. Yes. Yeah. With all the like fall type flavors. Yeah. Oh, I see. Your smoked, next episode. Little smoked meats and stuff. Yeah. Oh. See, look at look at we're coming up with ideas. I'm not in prep. <laughs> I love charcuterie too. But How yeah, I can all? totally like pumpkin's my second favorite. So mm. I would say apple pie. The hard thing with apple pie is it has to be really good apple pie. Okay. My my whole story is my grandma used to make apple pie and it was my favorite pie ever. Like favorite, right? So nothing can beat that. So if I can't get a good apple pie, yeah. for me it's not really worth it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm the same way with cheesecake too. If the mm -hmm. cheesecake's not really good, it's not mm -hmm. worth it. Um, anything rich is, yeah. is important to me. It's yeah. important. 
very <laughs> the important things in life, right? Um, so that, and then I do like a good pecan pie too. Okay, I so. can't say that I've had one in my adult years. I don't even want to talk about it. I also didn't realize that I actually liked pecans okay. until I became an adult. So okay. the fact that I haven't like explored that pie yet, obviously I'm missing out on life. I mean, that makes sense. Like, I don't know. I think when I was a kid, it was like, you don't put nuts in pie. Mm. Mm -hmm. You don't put nuts in brownies either, by the way. Oh, yes, I still do. believe that. Oh, yes, you do. No, you don't. don't put anything in a brownie. No, no, you don't put nuts in a brownie. No, do not. <laughs> Why is this going down a rabbit hole of, like, sweet treats now? I'm like, great. What are you I'm thinking. Nice? I'm like, I'm planning all yeah. these things out. No so. nuts in brownies, no. huh? Okay. No. Mm -mm. No. Just OG, original. Yes. You can put, you can put like chocolate chips in there. Ooh, if it's not going to melt, crunch. yeah, if it's not going to melt okay. into the, into the brownie, it's going to, it's going to stop the texture of the brownie. Then it's not, it's not good. Like, like, like nuts are not moist and chewy. They're, That's true. You know what I mean? They're crunchy mm -hmm. and they're hard, which mm -hmm. is okay, but not in a brownie. Okay. I can respect that. So like I could see swirls of caramel, yes. you know, things like that. Yes. Please hundred percent. <laughs> So good. Um, so good. But yeah, so the other thing that I didn't have until a few years ago as far as adult life is sweet potato pie. Oh, so apparently I have been missing out on life too. Yeah. I didn't even get into sweet potatoes in general yeah. until I started bodybuilding. Yeah. See, I always saw sweet potatoes as being a savory thing mm -hmm. and not like a pie thing, you know? They're so good. Oh my God. I, ba I baked it. Because oh, I wanted, to, I gosh. wanted it, and yeah. my husband was like, "That's his favorite, one of his favorite pies. Oh. His favorite pie is actually blueberry that his dad used to make." But anyway, yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 that's delicious. Yeah, mm -hmm. but um, so sweet potato pie is his favorite over pumpkin. Mm. And I was like, well, "I've never had sweet potato pies." I made one. And I was like, "Oh my god, yeah. oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah." Okay, let's let's. I get think it. I might try. Okay, because <laughs> my mom always makes a. She does a pumpkin pie, and I never eat it. Every Thanksgiving, I never yeah. eat it. So yeah. I'm just like, I don't want a pumpkin pie. But again, since I started bodybuilding, I started eating pumpkin, like puree yeah. and things. Yeah, pumpkin's great, guys. And now I'm it's like, so I love it. So I think I'll try pumpkin yeah. pie this year. Yeah, that's even a little tip for you guys too. That's not part of this, but pumpkin is really good for you. So mm -hmm. yeah, mix it in with some oatmeal. Mm -hmm. Oof. Yep, love it. So okay, so we're gonna start with this. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna pour it in. So, good. so what do you do? You do three-ish tablespoons for a serving for like a cup and a half. Okay. So we're gonna okay. do. We're gonna do about two and a half cups or so today. Yeah. So it's gonna be about double what I did the last okay. thing because you're drinking it with me. Mm -hmm. When we finished up, when I finished up yet last week, I had that cup and I had about a half a cup nice. left. Okay. So of course I drank the whole thing. Not really. So anyway, waste none. But again, it's it's really kind of to your. Um, your taste and like again, I've done this a thousand times so I know what I'm doing as yeah. far as portions and stuff like that are concerned But it's a tablespoon essentially mm -hmm. um, And like if you, if you want to measure it just so you have consistency in your flavoring yeah. You know just do a tablespoon and do three of those per like cup and a half Perfect. And then you can then you can gauge if you want to go stronger or yeah. weaker or whatever that kind of thing So See, and I'm learning this process too. So I just order after watching your first episode. Yeah ordered my little bean grinder because apparently you are drinking trash coffee if it's already ground. Yeah. No, she was going to bring another flavor. She's like, but all they have is ground. And I said, no. <laughs> and I bought it just because I wanted to explore it. it tastes like garbage. Yeah. See? Was I right or was I right? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Another tip too is like if you get the, the whole bean coffee, this was one of the girls mentioned this as well, you can freeze it. Mm, mm -hmm. Freezing your coffee will actually will help to hold the flavor as well and the taste and all that. So freeze the, the this bag, which is going freeze to the freezer. Bag. Yeah, freeze the whole bag. I mean, if it's vacuum sealed, you're fine. But once oh, you've yeah. opened it up, you yeah. know. Okay, that should be so fall. It's so pretty. It just makes me want to snuggle up by the fireplace. Yeah, that's the best part about the fall, isn't it? Yeah. We have three fireplaces in my house. <sighs> Choose your own adventure. <laughs> I love it. You know, I'm excited for this. And apparently you can, if you don't have a bean grinder at home, if you buy Starbucks bags of whole beans, you can actually take it to Starbucks and they'll grind it for you. Uh, but they only grind their brands. 
They do right. not poison their machines with any other. Yep. So again, I used to work at Starbucks. We used to do that. People would come in and they would be like, it'd be our regulars, and they would come in and yeah. they would get their drink and then they would buy their beans. While their drink was being made, they would have their, their bag of coffee mm -hmm. that was actually ground. So yeah, we'll just give us a minute to kind of bubble up and then we'll be good to go with that. But um, yeah, the more that you do this, the more you're gonna understand like what your tolerance is mm -hmm. or what you like as far as the strength of your coffee and all that kind of stuff too. There's no one specific right way to do this. It's just whatever you like. Yeah. I'm like watching and taking notes so that tomorrow I don't you mess do this up. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it yourself. Yeah. See, we're learning. We're it's learning so together. It's so easy though. It really is. So every morning I make a pot of coffee every morning. I drink it, Dan drinks it, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. But during the day, like if I just want a cup of coffee, this is what I do, mm -hmm. right? Um, some people have Keurigs and things like that. I don't particularly like Keurigs. They're just not strong enough. Yeah. And you don't have the ability. I mean, I know you can get your own your own yeah. little cup and yeah. put your stuff in there. Reusables. So I, you don't really have, most people don't have the ability to, to make it how they want to make it. And mm -hmm. again, you're getting pre-ground beans. It's just not the same. Mm -hmm. It's just not the same. Mm -hmm. no. it is the one thing I play around with is keeping the water amount lower for like how much, you know, I fill yeah. the cup to have yeah. a little more strength to it. Yeah. But... Yeah. So and it, fun fact too. The lighter roasts mm -hmm. have more caffeine than the darker roasts. So if you think about it this way, like the darker roasts have been cooked longer. Yeah. So they've cooked out some of the caffeine. So the lighter roasts haven't been cooked as long. So that's why they have more caffeine still in them. It's just like burning out the moisture in a yeah. chicken breast. Like the more you cook it, the less moisture it has. Yeah. Same scenario here. That makes sense. Yeah. And I always just out of habit, I always get dark roast. Yeah. I like the taste of dark, dark roast better. That's probably why it's stronger. stronger. Yeah. 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 It's stronger. More flavorful. Yeah. And some people, like if you're just getting started on this and stuff like that too, the, the lighter roast, the blonde roast, those kind of roasts are easier ones to start with. Mm -hmm. Because I know a lot of people like their like their coffee with a bunch of crap in it. Yeah. Like creamer and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so if you're trying to, you know. If <laughs> That's what I said to you about that trash bag that I got. Oh, trash bag. Yeah. The pre-browned beans. Yeah. I was like, I mean, if you put all that extra zhuzh in it, then yeah. maybe it'll taste like something, but yeah. that's not how we roll. No. So I was just like, <laughs> and dumped it. I was like, this would have been a waste of caffeine for the day. So I just. There's just so many things that are so much better about the pure bean itself mm -hmm. versus yeah, all the junk. Yeah. Plus, you got all the extra calories, it's extra work. Yeah. It's extra, just extra everything. Everything is extra. And so, how do you know how much water you want to put? So again, this is going to be dependent on you. Okay. Um, most of the time, what you should do if you're just starting out is to measure your water prior to putting right. it in. So you know, a little thing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> something else. But like again, it's 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 you can try different things. Just try more water, try less water. You know, whatever you like. Yeah. Once you find your sweet spot, then you can stay there. You know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, this this right here is going to yield probably two and a half cups right here. So, like I said, you just, yeah, you just stir it. You can set a timer if you want. Stir it for like a minute, and then you'll, then you'll press through. I'm going to knock this whole thing down. I'm not going to. I know, right? right? Oh, this just makes me want to make like an Irish coffee. Oh, yeah. So, you know, that I, that I can fuck oh, with, that I can fuck with. Love it. <laughs> that, that's the only thing that's allowed in my coffee is yeah. alcohol. <laughs> oh, I am so looking forward to certain fall things. And nothing crazy, just like, it's just like a nice wintry treat, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, after Thanksgiving dinner drink. Yep. Ah, hey, other things. That's probably about right. Okay, we feel good about that? We feel good about that. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I'm going to be careful of this because I did this the other day. Uh-oh. And did it. Slow and steady. Yep, slow and steady. If you get if you get resistance on the plunger, pull back. <laughs> Life lessons. I know. It's already this is already like resisting me. It's like a I was doing that to me earlier too, and I'm, I think it has to do oh, with there just you go. um the amount of air that gets caught. Yeah. It's the, it's 
top part isn't going down. That's why it's getting stuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Back step, step, step back. Step back. Don't, don't, don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourself. Don't burn I'm gonna go, yourself. I'm going to go at like an angle, see okay. if that helps. Because it's getting stuck. That's better. It's probably time for me to get another French press because okay. that, that thing came undone. That's why it's doing that. Oh, okay. Okay, we're good. Nice. We're good. <laughs> Score! <laughs> it's the, it's the, oh, the I see. The top. Yeah. See, it came, came undone. That's why yeah. it's doing that. Hmm. It looks and smells beautiful. Yeah, like I said, the last time I did this, it went everywhere. Jeez. I was like, oops, yeah. my bad. So yeah, you can see we got two nice. cups down. There's still there's still about a half a cup still in there. Yeah. Right underneath. I just didn't press it all the way down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, let's go in the other room and try this out. First, before we do our questions, let's give it a try. So sniff it first, bring in the whole room, mm -hmm. all that. I just felt snacks with it. <laughs> That's the best part. We do when we're out of when we're out of prep, we gotta do it with like actual like food because it makes a big difference. Oh yeah. I think I'm getting the sage and the smell. Yeah. I don't smell the, the pecans. No. Mm -mm. At all. The sage, yes. 100%. Taste wise, though, I can see this being delicious with now what I want to try pecan pie. Right, I know, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm trying to think of the only word that I can think of is, and it's not a good word, it's not a good, good descriptive word, is burnt. Like, I don't. Yeah. Like, it's like a. Like maybe. Fireside. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. roasted, maybe is a better mm -hmm. is a better word because burnt in indicates a bad it's flavor, not, and that's yeah. not what I'm that's not yeah. what I'm tasting. It's not a bad flavor. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, it's like roasted. It's like fireside, mm -hmm. you know, like like go camping. And yeah, make this while snuggling under a flannel yeah. blanket and. Which, which works, this, this little candle here is, is marshmallow fireside, so maybe that has something to do with it. <laughs> we are on a whole fall know, vibe right now. This was actually a gift from Gabby yesterday at the show, one of, my, one of my clients. So it actually, it's it's marshmallow fireside is what this flavor, mm. the flavor scent is. I don't know if it's probably I scent for, it. for candles, not yeah. butter, but whatever. Eh, well, you, got, you guys know what I mean, but yeah. cool. Like they've got so many like food inspired candles, like it's hard not to call them flavors. Yeah. Like, okay, so if I was to describe this one in comparison to the last one that I tried, the espresso one, the other one was, that one was almost like a, like a sweet, and this is not, okay. this is yeah. more of a hearty, like, meaty yeah. type of, yeah, type of blend. Like, darker tones. Yeah. Is what it's, I think of. You it know is, what I mean? It's like, it's, it's like. I, and I, it's not a nighttime drink because it's got caffeine. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like a decaf mm -hmm. go to bed kind of thing. But that's mm -hmm. kind of what it reminds but me. But it of. would be good as an Irish coffee. Drink. It should. It should. It sure would. Yeah. Should. Should. Would. It, it should. Would. It, it would. should. <laughs> it just should. <laughs> <laughs> it's shooting all mm -hmm. over the place. <laughs> it's shooting. No. No. The more I drink it, the more I like it. Yeah. It's again. It's like that. Sit around the fireplace mm -hmm. and then, like have a like after dinner, after your Thanksgiving dinner, and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I like it. I can't wait. Yeah, it's you know it's funny because thinking about it that way, like the other one that I mentioned, the, the espresso one that I did before, it's kind of like that would be like your wake up kind of mm -hmm. bright mm -hmm. little vibrancy. This is more like just a chill after dinner mm -hmm. at the fireplace, mm -hmm. which makes sense with it being Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah, imagine oh, that. It's like they know what they're doing. Almost. You know, just a billion dollar company. They have no clue what they're doing with their, their flavoring though. Oh, cool. Awesome. All right, cool. So that was our, that's our tasting for today. So love that. Let's start talking about these questions now. So, yeah. you know, like I said, um, sometimes I get a little, uh, blinded because I'm in the fitness industry. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I hear a lot of the same things, you know, people tell me, you know, things all the time that they are questioning, but it's like, you know, I'm in the competition space. So it's, it's very nuanced. It's very, um, individual like there's there's 
people that just are in life, everyday life, yeah, doing everyday things, not in the fitness industry, wanting to get better, wanting to be healthy, all of that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. that's who she works with daily. So, yeah. you know, I thought bringing her in and kind of going through some of those questions would be helpful to you guys listening. So give me an idea, something, what's a, what's a good one you think that they ask um, all the time? More often than not, the first question is, what well, somebody who, you know, they want to lose a couple of pounds. Yeah. But yeah. they don't know what's better. Like, what should I do? Mm -hmm. You know, how do I go about? And you know, I always preface with, well, I'm not a coach or a trainer. Right, right, right. I have no education, formal education on this. I'm yeah. just very fortunate enough to be able to have support and team and systems in place that right. tell me what to do. And yeah. then I can learn from that. Um, but yeah, one of the questions is, what do you recommend for someone who just wants to be a few pounds lighter mm -hmm. and... After I give the whole disclosure, it's usually what well, bodies are made in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. Because it's reality. Like, yep. people are so... You, you think about it. You wake up, people, whether it's taking care of the kids, the dogs, their husband, their partner, or whoever. They're just go, 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 go. They probably haven't even had breakfast by noon. Yes. Yep. You gotta... In my opinion, because then that goes into another question of intermittent fasting versus eating regularly, but... I mean, you got to put something in your body to energize it, to get going, yep. right? Get the, get your body working. The first thing I tell people to do when they're starting on a new lifestyle journey is that, is to get food in your system for your breakfast. Yeah. One of the biggest things that I see happening, because I work with a lot of women over the age of 35, is they just don't eat. Mm -hmm. They don't eat. Eating is essential, right? So make sure you have a well-balanced breakfast every morning. Now, this doesn't mean you have to be like to a T measuring everything or anything like that. I'd say, listen, get yourself some eggs, some oatmeal, some, you know, some blueberries or some berries or fruit or something that you like. Um, make sure you have water when you first wake up in the morning, yeah. those kinds of things. And just start your day like that. That's a really well-balanced meal for your, for your breakfast. You've got mm -hmm. your carbs, your fats, your protein. You're yeah. good. Now you've started your day on the right foot. You've given your body something to fuel up with. Now, there, you know, just kind of to touch on what you mentioned, the fasting thing. So there's lots of different conflicting studies. Um, the overwhelming majority thinks that fasting can be okay, but I tend to think it works a little bit better for men than it does for women. Mm -hmm. um, we have different hormonal panels than, than men do, so we need things a little bit differently. So in general, I feel like fasting actually works very well. And we're talking about when we're, get, we're getting up into older ages and things like that too. Yeah. I tend to think fasting works really, really well for men. Um, not the same school of thought for women. It, in, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So again, this is just by taking lots of research and kind of seeing how it's affected other people that I've worked with, things like that. So I'm not a huge fan of women fasting. Yeah. Just, just not a huge fan of yeah. it. So food is very, very important. Yeah. Food and water. I mean, you touched on yes. that. One of the things that I always recommend folks do, I do it myself. The night before, I always put my first glass of water in my bathroom because mm -hmm. it's the first place I go when I wake up lay down on the floor crack my back and go right to the bathroom yep, yep. and that way my first thing is water and then it's my coffee so yep. I always have eight ounces of water before I even put yeah you know yeah well create, not poison but you well, know, create, create caffeine but in my this body. is this caffeine dehydrates you mm -hmm. coffee dehydrates you so you need you are already dehydrated from sleeping and not drinking anything for eight, 10 hours. Yeah. So the last thing you wanna do is dehydrate yourself more. The majority of heart attacks take place in the morning because people are dehydrated. That's when the majority of, of heart attacks happen and it's dehydration. So water is really, really important. Yeah. Just first thing in the morning, plus throughout the rest of the day, it's really important. Yeah. So there's so that. people don't drink yeah. water. Don't so, eat and don't drink water. Yeah, create a habit that, that yeah. you're gonna be able to stick to. You know, yeah. she mentioned putting it in the bathroom. The first thing that I do when I get up in the morning is I get my coffee brewing while the, the pot's going. That's when I go get my water, I get my supplements, I take all my mm -hmm. vitamins, all that kind of stuff, and I take all of that. When I'm done taking all that, my coffee's brewed and I'm ready to yeah. go. So that's my, that's my routine. Create something that's going to be a good routine for you. And the same thing when it comes to breakfast too. Some people can't mm -hmm. cook in the morning. So have your breakfast ready to go so you can grab it out of the refrigerator and go, yeah. you know? Stick it in your bag, you know, whether it's a, you know, you can even do like a smoothie or something like that, yeah. stuff in your refrigerator or something, whatever, just have it ready to go. Well, and I know I have to be careful with what I'm having for breakfast mm -hmm. outside of my prep life. Like it's very routine of what I'm eating in mm -hmm. prep, but outside of that, when I have more flexibility and freedom with like playing with different foods, mm -hmm. 
I don't want to put a whole bunch of fats in my breakfast yeah. or like a whole bunch of artificial flavorings and things because then that sets the tone for the rest of the day yeah. and either I'm going to go back to sleep because I'm feeling sluggish or I just yeah. want to keep shoveling more food in my face instead of having like a good balance yeah. of things. Yep. Yep. And that's, I'm the same way. And again, everybody's going to function a little bit differently. You know, you got to figure out what works for you and what yeah. you're going to stick to. The best fitness plan is the one that you can stick to. That that's the best, best fitness plan, right? So there's no, there's no, you have to do it this way. You have to do it that way. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be consistent with it, that's what's going to work for you. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. And just make sure that you're getting really whole nutrition dense foods. Um, this is something that I do with every one of my clients when they first start with me is I have them log what they're eating for three to five days just so I can get an idea of what they're actually eating. Yeah. And the majority of them, the majority of them are eating convenience foods, foods that they can grab and go. Yeah. Well, listen, that has a ton of sodium, preservatives, all this stuff. If it can live on your shelf, <laughs> imagine what it's doing inside your body. It's just sitting inside your body. Yeah. It really is. So if you do simple things like cleaning that stuff up, I'm telling you, you will lose a good three to five pounds of just mm -hmm. inflammation. There it is. Just inflammation by cleaning that stuff up. When you go to the grocery store, shop on the outside perimeter of the grocery store. If it's going to go bad on your shelves, it's going to be good for your body, mm -hmm. right? Because that means your body's going to process it and digest it. If it's good, it's going to sit on the shelf, it's going to sit in your body. Just think of it that way. Yeah. Okay. Um, Until you get to the big good dial. Because <laughs> that is still on the outer perimeter. True. True. But I'll be honest with you, I'll be honest with you, getting that stuff is yeah. better than going into the inner, inner part that's of the true. store and getting something that's been sitting on the shelf for five that years. That's true. Yeah. So I would rather you get fresh baked food. goods yeah. versus the fresh. 100%. Yeah. I would rather you go get something from the bakery that was baked that morning, mm. you know, the breads and things like that. Yeah. Way better for you to get that stuff than it is for you to get stuff that's going to sit there. Again. That's true. So it's, it's still, it still rings true. Yeah. And, and again, going back to when I'm talking about lifestyle clients and stuff, you can have all that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, you can have whatever you want that fits inside the macros that I've given you. And if it's a whole food like that, it's going to be processed better yeah. than something that has a ton of crap inside of it. And when I'm talking about crap, what I'm saying is ingredients that you can't pronounce the name. That part. So if you go onto your, your nutrition label and you look at the ingredients and you, there's, there's more than three ingredients on there, it's too processed. That's the first thing. Second thing is, is that if you're looking through all the ingredients here and you can't pronounce half of them, then that's not something you should be putting into your body, right? Look away. Look away. Yeah. Or turn away. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's just like, you know, just think of it in, the, in those terms. If you can't pronounce the actual ingredients in the product, you probably shouldn't be putting it in your body. Mm-hmm. Fair. And that alone, just doing those couple of things is going to help you drop a couple of pounds yeah. just like immediately. Yeah. Immediately it's going to help you drop a couple of pounds. And you're going to feel better. I was going to say, and then you're going to feel better and then you're going to want to start taking it to the next mm -hmm. level. That's on, right. The next level. On. That's yeah. right. And it's like, you know, inflammation is the silent killer is what we talk about all the time. And inflammation comes from all that stuff. It comes from added sodium preservatives, fillers, you know, foods that have been processed in the lab versus grown in the, in the ground, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's the first place that you could, that you can really start to clean things up. And like you said, I mean, then you start feeling better and then yeah. you want to take it to the next step. Yeah. Right. What else? What's, what's another good question? That people um, ask you? What's the best cardio to do? Well, like you just said, <laughs> the one, the you're diet, the one you're going to stick <laughs> yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whatever you enjoy. Like I know I won't touch a Stairmaster yeah. to save my life. I yeah. will not sit on a rower. I will not bicycle. That are, like that's uncomfortable to mm -hmm. me. And people are like, oh, you got to get the right seat. No, I don't want that. Um, <laughs> yep. So for me, it's elliptical because it's yep. easy on the joints. Yep. Um, in the you know spring summer when it's nice out, swimming, mm -hmm. great on the yeah, joints. Absolutely. Um, and you can find indoor pools in yep. the winter, so you've got that option too. Um, and then I have to be careful with incline treadmill walking mm -hmm. because depending on what shoes I'm in, yeah, it it'll affect my ankles, knees, hips. Yes, she is about to be 40, so that's a thing that I now have to worry about. Listen, we just went check your posing downstairs. I sat in the chair and I go, oh, that hurt my knee. I oh, sat. Okay. All I did was sit down. Take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. Yes. Just sat wrong. I just sat wrong. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. We're still spring chickens. Yeah. Okay. Up here. Uh -huh. Up here. Uh -huh. Body might not, yeah. might, might, might not be getting yeah. that but. but honestly, whatever you're going to do, yeah is the best cardio correct some people like taking exercise classes 
I hate exercise classes. Same. I don't know if it's Same. because I don't want to be told what to do by the instructor, even though I'm being told what to do by my coach every day. I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's still it's still that feeling of having that autonomy, like you can do it whenever you want to do yeah. it, versus having to do it when they tell you to do it. Yeah, there's a difference. Yeah. There is a difference. But you're right. It's it's whatever's going to be best for you. The, um, there's no scientific evidence that says that doing fasted cardio versus fed cardio is going to be better for dropping fat. It's mm -hmm. just there isn't. It's very, very minimal. And again, it's it's something that's going to be person dependent. So you don't have to do fasted cardio. Not a, not a thing that you have to do. What I would rather see you do when it comes to cardio is your effort. If you're going to put more effort into it when you're fasted, do it. Mm -hmm. If you're going to put more effort into it when you got food in your system, do it. That's what's most important is the effort behind the actual action, not when you do the action. So again, going back to the consistency aspect of it, when are you going to consistently do it? If you're going to consistently do it in the morning before the day starts, cool, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. If you're going to consistently do it after you strength train, cool, that's, that's perfect. If you're going to consistently do it after you get done with your work for the day, that's me, mm -hmm. then do it. I do my cardio at night because then I've already finished all my work for the day. Yeah. I don't have to think anymore because what happens for me, for me, cardio is not a thinking thing. Mm -hmm. So I get on the, on my elliptical. I have an elliptical. That's how I do mine. And I just start thinking about all the things I have to get done. Mm -hmm. My head's going like this. So I can't put the effort into the cardio. Mm -hmm. If I do it at the end of my work day, I'm no longer thinking anymore because I'm done. So I can just focus on. I do social media stuff, I yeah. watch TV, whatever. I can focus on what's in front of me versus what I gotta do when I get done with my cardio. Yeah. So that's what works for me, for my, right. for my, for my consistency. Yeah. That's not the same thing for everybody. Some people just wanna get done and out of the way. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And that's and the cool world too. is quiet and I can just go. Yep, you know? that's right. And that's, that's, that's the most important part. Yeah. And again, like you were saying, the modalities, whatever one's gonna be best for you. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a, a lifestyle client who, was doing the inc incline walking on the mm -hmm. treadmill and it was hurting her joints. Yeah. It was hurting her knees, it was hurting her hips. So I told her, I said, she asked me if she could do the bike. I said, yeah, go do the bike. Mm -hmm. um, I told her, so you can do swimming too if that's yeah. helpful for your joints and stuff too. So she started doing that, um, doing the bike and everything like that. Now I will say she didn't put as much effort into the bike. Mm -hmm. So once her joints started feeling better, we tweaked some of her diet stuff too. Like we, I changed her macros around, gave her some more fats, that kind of thing that helped her with her joints. Nice. And once she started feeling better, she started going back to the elliptical and back to incline walking. And now she's sticking to that because she's getting more effort out of it. And if she ever starts feeling like she's having joint problems again, she goes back to the bike again. Yeah. So you just, again, have to know what's going to work best for you. Yeah. I think I would be the same way. And that's probably another reason why I don't do the bike. Not because the, the seat cushions are comfortable, but the idea of sitting and doing cardio, yeah. I just don't feel like I would push myself. Yeah. You know, I've done spin classes mm. and those work because they're, so, they're like, back out of the saddle. Yes. Back down. yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Those are very, very intense. Um, mm -hmm. I did that a lot during the COVID years because oh, I was at yeah. home and I had a bike at home. So I got on the Peloton app and that's yeah. when I did it all the time. Um, but in general, that's not my favorite. I yeah. like, I like the elliptical myself too. I have again, an at home elliptical. It's one of these Bowflex ellipticals. So it's got resistance to it. Mm -hmm. So it's almost a mix between an elliptical and a stepper. Nice. So it's got the motion of an elliptical, but it's got resistance to it. So it adds, that's, that's how I'm able to get my heart rate to go up faster. Yeah. I can't get my heart rate to go up fast enough when I'm on the elliptical by mm -hmm. itself. I can't do it. When I'm doing incline walking, my knees hurt when I'm doing yeah. incline walking. So I just don't like doing that. And my hips start to hurt too. Yeah. Um, so the elliptical I found for me is the best way for me to do cardio. Now I do do some hit cardio as well. I do metabolic training and things like that. Metabolic training is using weights. Um, so I do that as well, but again, it's just finding things that's going to work best for your body. Yeah. So yeah. again, it's, it's what you're going to stick to. Yeah. There's no right answer or wrong answer when it comes to the modality or when you do it, just do it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Well, and for some people, it's something as simple as just walking, walk. just start walking, yes. Yes. you know, I have for when I'm working at home in my home office, I have a, a sit a stand desk because I feel like a psychopath if I'm sitting for too long. Like yeah. I just hate being still, whether it's in the car or flying, anything. Hate being still for so long. So I just raise up my little desk and mm -hmm. I've got my little desk treadmill yeah. and I just casually walk while I'm doing certain walking. Walking is the best thing you can mm -hmm. do for your health. The mm -hmm. best. It is so underrated. Walking is the number one thing you can do yeah. for your health. 
sounds like a super old lady, but sometimes I'll even just like get my arms pumping. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and that gets my heart rate going. Yeah. yeah. Just a quick little power walk on that treadmill and pumping the arms yep. with some intensity too, like resistance with it. Mm -hmm. That's a workout. Yeah. And then I'll take start, it. Start tracking your steps for good heart health, anywhere from ten, eight to 10K steps a day. You're right in the money spot mm -hmm. right there. And how you do that, just like she said, you get up and do your power walks. For me, I sit, I sit most of the day. So unless I'm going to the gym or I'm doing my cardio, I'm not getting a lot of steps in. Mm. So at the end of the night, again, I go and I do a walk, 45 yeah. minute walk outside, up and down the hills in my, in my neighborhood and stuff like that. And that's, that gets me to my eight to 10 goal, depending on where I'm at. Um, you always want to have at least 8,000 steps a day. Yeah. That's well, talk about place. how good that is for your, like, just your internal mm -hmm. soul and clock mm -hmm. and everything, just getting outside and having mm -hmm. that fresh air, whether it's in the morning or in the evening, there are studies that show that even walking at night yeah. is just as good for you yep. as like that morning sunshine yep. and, you know, vitamin D and all that jazz. Right. Well, and just our, mod our modalities, again, as, as humans, um, we're hunters and gatherers, right? Mm -hmm. Our bodies are built to move. Mm -hmm. And if you're not moving them, you're losing that mobility. Yeah. Just the simple, just your simple movement of your stride and your hips yeah. and things like that makes a difference in how you feel. Uh, because we're built to do that. We are not built to sit at desks all day long. We're just not. That's not how we were meant to, how we were meant to live. So, you know, we can look at studies and things like that, but you look at people like in Europe that walk everywhere they go, yeah. they tend to be a little bit healthier yeah. than a little here. Longer. Yeah, than here in the US. We don't talk about what their food looks like right here to ours, but you yeah. know, right. decent. Right. Well, and it always goes, it just goes back to how were we created? Yeah. You know, we weren't created to sit on our ass all day long and drink coffee. Mm -hmm. Even though it's so good. <laughs> and dream of sweet treats to eat I know, with right? it. And charcuteries <laughs> and all the things. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's do one more question that you get. Okay. One more question. Um, let's see. Oh, this is a good one. Uh, I don't eat meat. How do I get more protein in? Mm. This is a hard one, guys. Yeah. I'm just going to be real. Eat me. <laughs> eat me. <laughs> <We're going laughs> <to others, laughs> right? Yeah. Well, I always recommend things like um, Greek yogurt, yeah. um, tofu, eggs, tofu is a good one. Um, spinach has a good amount of protein in it. Protein powders, even though you don't want to have a, you know, yeah. a diet of this like processed stuff. Eh, yeah. It's a way to get it in, throw it in with a smoothie with some fruits some spinach, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, and then there's a bread, a flat bread that I get. Um, apparently it's pronounced Lavash bread, okay. L-A-V-A-S-H. And it's just a beautiful little flat bread. It's got like 14, eight or 14. I don't know, but it's got a good amount of protein in it and mm -hmm. like very low fats, very low carbs. So I use that for almost anything. If I want to do like a pizza in yeah. the air fryer, if I'm going to do a breakfast wrap, um, turn it into pita chips, yeah. dip it in some hummus, some avocado, like whatever. And there's That's lots of really things good. like there's beans and things like that you mm -hmm. can put in that have, have protein in them too. You have to understand too, like we body build, so we have to get a lot of protein in. Mm -hmm. You don't need that. If you're just a normal person, yeah. right? As we're talking about lifestyle, as long as you're getting in about your lean body weight and and, and protein per day, you're good, yeah. right? You don't need to. We're eating, you know, 160 to 200 grams of protein a day because we're trying to hold and build muscle and try to hold it over in a deficit and all this. You don't need to do that if you're just trying to be a lifestyle, you know, in a yeah. good, good place, right? So don't think you have to be drinking protein shakes every meal, you mm -hmm. know? Because I see that happen a lot too. I have mm -hmm. girls that come to me for, for, again, for fitness and lifestyle training. And the first thing that they're doing is they're doing two, three, four protein shakes a day. Yeah, and then the protein bars mm -hmm. and like, there's just so much. Again, when we're they're talking, tasty. Yeah, we're talking protein bars. They're literally like candy bars with mm -hmm. a little extra protein in them. Mm -hmm. They're not, they're not the best. Marketing is a very powerful thing. Mm -hmm. Marketing is a very powerful thing. I would rather, like you said, go get, you know, tofu, go get the beans, go get those things that are going to add the protein up. And this is a simple question that somebody asked me too, one of my clients when she first started tracking, she's like, do I track the protein that's in my other foods as well? Like, you know, different greens and grains and stuff like that, they have a minimal amount of protein in them, but yeah. they do contain protein. And yes, you track yeah. all of it. 
because that's still protein, mm -hmm. right? So you don't have to specifically sit there and eat a pound of meat mm -hmm. in order to get your protein in. There's other ways to do it, right? Yeah. So all of those little things, they add up, they yeah. add up. And as long as you're having a decent amount of protein in your daily diet, that is going to help you maintain your muscle mass and keep you healthy long-term longevity. And again, everybody's a little bit different on this, but you don't have to be doing, you know, 150, 250 grams mm -hmm. of carb or grams of protein per day like we do. Yeah. We're, we're in a different we're in a different league you know when it comes to that kind of stuff we're trying to build the muscle you're just trying to maintain it yeah. you know it's different i'm glad you touched on the amount of protein to eat because that's another question yeah. like well mm -hmm. how much should i eat I'm like well how much do you weigh right you know like let's start there yeah and then when you put in perspective how much protein they should should be eating mm -hmm. and then they tell you what they actually throw up today and it's and i'm sure you see it all the time when people start logging their stuff for that mm -hmm. first week working with you it's like Oh, you're not eating much protein at all. I mean, yeah. right, you go out to eat and you order a chicken salad. Mm -hmm. You're getting like, like three ounces, three ounces, of, ounces if you're of chicken. Lucky. Yeah. 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 And then a bowl of carbs, basically, right. all the extra stuff that goes into it. Yep. So you're like, oh, well, when I go out to eat, I get a salad or I get this. I get, well, that's good. Yeah. But it's still not enough protein well, for what your little body yeah. needs. And understanding what's in that in that salad mm -hmm. you know I, I see that all the time people think that they're making healthy choices but again mm -hmm. marketing marketing mm -hmm. is very very uh self yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. you have to pay attention to certain labels and things that they're telling you because they're telling you something to get you to buy it that doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily mean that it's what it what they say it is yeah. you know um like the no added sugar thing i love that one because people see that all the time and they think it's sugar free it's not sugar free it just means they didn't add sugar to it mm -hmm. that's all if you have a banana you could have a banana and say no added sugar because it's already got sugar in it. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't need yeah. sugar added, right? So make sure that you're looking beyond just the marketing because I see that all the time. Yeah. You know, again, we're going back to you take something that's really healthy for you, like oatmeal, mm -hmm. and you put it into a packet and put maple <laughs> flavoring on it in it or whatever, and it's got a ton of sugar. It's like and all it's of a sudden, so good. It's so good, but it's got a ton of sugar yeah. all of a sudden, and no longer this this whole grain that's good yeah. for you. You know, so. Yeah. Again, go beyond just the marketing, go beyond what they're trying to sell you and look at what is actually in the food, yeah. right? So, and again, going back to, this is why having um, somebody to help guide you is a good idea because you don't need to be doing the things that your favorite fitness influencers are doing. You don't mm -hmm. need to be doing that in order to be healthy. There's a difference. There's a difference between being a competitive athlete or being a fitness influencer or whatever it may be and just being a healthy human being. There's a difference. And that's kind of why we put together this this playlist here on YouTube too because I kind of want to start dispelling some of those those yeah. myths and those yeah. things that you don't really know unless you're reading you know fancy ads and and mm -hmm. stuff like that people that are trying to sell you shit yeah and there's <laughs> always something new being sold something to always. try and capture you and yeah keep it simple stupid. that's right yeah <laughs> it, it always goes back to if you ever question something just go back to the simplest version of that thing the simplest version of that thing there's nothing wrong with oatmeal. There is something wrong with oatmeal that has a ton of preservatives mm -hmm. and flavoring and sugar added and things like that, right? So go get the regular normal oats, yeah. right? Add I'm always oats. still hungry after the processed packets. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Versus my like regular like big bag of oats. Yeah, that I just portion out and then I add whatever I want to it at that point. That's right. Whether it's like a fruit and nut mix. Yep. A little bit of cinnamon. Yeah. Um, if I'm feeling squirrely, a little bit of like brown sugar, mm -hmm. you know, just to flavor it to my liking at that point. But and there's nothing wrong with artificial sweeteners in moderation too. Mm -hmm. Just just as an FYI, it's okay to have artificial sweeteners. They're yeah. not going to kill you. You'll be okay. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> I know. I know. Right. So much. <laughs> so much. <laughs> yeah. There's a whole demonizing thing about that for a long time, and it's just not the case. It's yeah. just not the case. Again, you don't want to be eating it every meal, mm -hmm. but in moderation, it's okay. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So guys, hopefully this was a helpful one for you. Uh, maybe you should go try some Thanksgiving blend. You know, mm -hmm. we're sitting here enjoying it. Probably we're. Our, I think our speech is getting faster as we're, as I know, we're sitting like, here. Get it out. Kathy, Kathy's kicking in. <laughs> and we're like, oh, and this, oh, and that, oh, and this. <laughs> I'm like, I need only one more question. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, we definitely started off like, hi, good morning. Oh, good morning. And then we're like, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh my god. Yeah, this is good though. This is good. This is gonna be really good.
for an after dinner cocktail. And that's what I would say. Like, like have, this is this is an after afternoon kind of coffee mm -hmm. kind of thing. I, I don't think I would do this in the morning, to be honest with you. I no. think I would do it. I think I would do it after. It's like a yeah. like, like afternoon tea time, you know, yeah. whatever that kind of thing. But just have coffee instead. If this were like a lazy day in the house, yeah. which one of those ever happened, but yeah, a girl can dream. Um, then I would start my morning with yeah. It. You yeah. know, yeah, I like it though. It's mm -hmm. it's warm and earthy. Yeah, yeah Thanksgiving morning before yeah. starting cooking in the kitchen. That's go. the vibe. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love it. All right, awesome. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Coffee to Cigars. Thank you to Jennifer for, jo for joining us. And you know, like I was saying, if you are out there having questions and maybe hopefully this conversation helped to spark questions too, drop them in the comments, like, comment, subscribe, all those fun things that we always say. Um, and if there's anything that you guys want us to test, just let me know. Um, other than that, we'll see you on the next one.